We just discussed how we can transform our carbonyl molecules using organometallic reagents and metal hydrides into their alcohol counterparts, such as the methyl primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols. Now, we're going to discuss the reverse process that is transforming our alcohols into the carbonyl counterpart. This is known as the oxidation of alcohols into the carbonyl carbonyl molecule. So there are many different reagents that we can use to successfully transform our primary and secondary alcohols into the carbonyl counterpart. But we're only going to focus on one reagent, mixing our chromium trioxide with pyridine to produce this carbonyl molecule from primary and secondary alcohols. And then we're going to discuss how this same reaction mechanism mechanism fails with tertiary alcohols and why it fails. So let's begin with our primary alcohol. Let's suppose we have the following primary alcohol and we mix it with chromium trioxide in the presence of pyridine and we form this product, our aldehyde. How exactly do we go about forming this aldehyde? What is the reaction mechanism? So basically there are four mechanistic steps in this reaction. So we have process number one that contains three steps and process number two that contains a single step. So let's begin with process number one. So in process number one, the alcohol molecule basically acts as a nucleophile because this oxygen contains a lone pair of electrons that can act in a nucleophilic fashion. And basically these lone pair of electrons attack this chromium atom displacing this pi bond and placing the lone pair of electrons onto this oxygen. Notice this reaction is analogous to the alcohol attacking our carbon of the carbonyl group. So basically the same thing happens here except now we have a bond between oxygen and chromium being formed and these electrons going onto this third carbon out of these three carbons. So basically we have the following intermediate that is formed and notice even though we didn't show it here, this is resonance stabilized. Basically this charge can be distributed among these other two oxygen atoms. So there are three resonance stabilized forms. Now in the next step we have deprotonation and protonation taking place. So let's suppose we have a water molecule that is found next to this oxygen. This oxygen will be protonated and an H atom will be transferred from this to this atom. And this is step number two. And in step number three, to basically remove this positive charge from this electronegative oxygen atom, we have, let's say, a hydroxide that is formed in step two, interacts with this H, grabs and transfers it to itself, and so now these electrons end up on the oxygen, and in the third step, we form the chromate ester, which basically does not contain any charge on either of these oxygens. So this is a relative stable intermediate. So once again in the first step followed by two proton transfers the chromate ester is formed. In the first step we have a nucleophilic addition reaction in which the alcohol attacks the chromium, displaces the pi bond and forms this intermediate here. So this step is analogous to our alcohol adding to the carbonyl to the carbon of the carbonyl that we discussed previously. So what about the second process? What about the last step? So basically we want to somehow take the chromate ester and form our aldehyde from this primary alcohol that we began with. Remember a primary alcohol simply means to this alcohol, to this hydroxide, we only have one uh, hydrocarbon group attached to it. Now, in the final step, in step number four, we have an E2 reaction taking place. We have our elimination reaction takes place 
in a single mechanistic step. So basically our pyridine acts as a base because it contains this nitrogen that has the lone pair of electrons. So it grabs this H atom that is found on the carbon adjacent to this oxygen. When it grabs this H atom, these two electrons that were in this bond are now basically free to form a pi bond between carbon and oxygen. When this pi bond is formed at the same time, these this bond is broken and these two electrons end up on the chromium atom. So we form the following. Um, so this is not a primary alcohol. I don't know why I wrote that. This is actually a aldehyde. So I don't know where my black marker is. So let's just write that this is our aldehyde. So our aldehyde is formed because when this pi bond is formed, we have one H atom attached to this carbon as well as this hydrocarbon ethyl group. And this is exactly what we wanted to form in the first place. Also, the other products are this protonated pyridine, the conjugate acid to this base, as well as this complex on which the chromium has a negative charge. Now, in the same exact way, if we replace the primary with a secondary alcohol, we can follow the same exact four steps to basically form our ketone instead of the aldehyde. So I'm not going to draw out the reaction mechanism by using with using uh, when we use secondary alcohols because this mechanism is literally the same mechanism. But we will discuss what happens if we take a tertiary alcohol and mix it with chromium trioxide in the presence of pyridine. So unlike primary and secondary alcohols which can be oxidized and we can produce the aldehyde and ketone via the oxidation reaction, if we use tertiary alcohols we will not be able to produce any type of a carbonyl molecule because the tertiary uh, alcohol does not have our hydrogen atom attached to this carbon so this elimination reaction E2 reaction cannot actually take place. So to see what we mean let's take a look at the following mechanism. So the first step is the same exact step. So we have let's say this tertiary alcohol. So the first step is this alcohol acts as a nucleophile forms a bond between the oxygen and the chromium. We have a positive charge on this oxygen, a negative charge on this oxygen. So we have two steps in which an H atom is transferred onto this oxygen. In the third step an H atom is lost by this oxygen and so we form this chromate ester. Now the problem with this is that this carbon does not have an H atom attached to it. So step number four, the elimination reaction cannot take place because we don't have an H atom that can be grabbed by this pyridine. And so step four cannot take place. So the fourth step, the elimination reaction cannot occur with the tertiary alcohol because they do not have our hydrogen atom that is needed for this reaction to actually take place. So this mechanistic setup using chromium trioxide and pyridine only works as long as our alcohol is a primary or secondary alcohol. It does not work with tertiary alcohols. So if we use primary alcohols we form aldehydes. If we use secondary alcohols we form our ketones. And this is the mechanism by which this reaction takes place. Once again it's important important to emphasize that these react these reagents are not the only reagents that can be used to successfully transform our primary and secondary alcohols into aldehydes and ketones other reagents can be used to conduct this same uh, reaction the same oxidation reaction of alcohols into carbonyl compounds